And it says we are live. I'm going to double check like I always do. Yep, same here. I'm going on my Facebook here. See if anyone Everybody can one bite. And share it and everything. If you guys are watching this right now, if you actually are on, we're just making sure. I just got the notification on my phone. Making sure everything yep, just is just got a notification good. also. Always want to make sure that we're We got we're one viewer. Yeah. I think I'm the only viewer right now. Oh, we got two. Okay, two. So maybe it's me and you. <laughs> it's me and you. <laughs> well, hi, 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 us. <laughs> Uh, we got three. We also got a like. No, we got three. Oh, we're, we're getting viewers. <laughs> we're just making, we're just right, double cool. making got, sure. Uh, all right. All right. So we're just still checking with all you folks. Uh, well, we got good to go right here. Okay. So, well, we got four. All right. Let's, let's just start off. Uh, I'm going to call you everything except for Brad. Um, <laughs> hi folks. Welcome to Craig this live uh i'm dan tj gosh that is brad the canucker shaw uh we are uh here in different parts of the united states and canada but uh uh thank you uh for all you fans for watching everything i want to thank joe sylvester and high octane coffee uh jason and fred from j concepts 6b apparel uh the uh, I'm a brain fart the name here, uh, uh, Brad, but the t-shirt company. Uh, oh, uh, uh, below the collar. And, uh, t-shirts to go. Below the collar yeah. .com backslash crush this podcast. Go check it out. We have some awesome designs up. As soon as we can get to 25 shirts sold, we can add more designs. So go check it out. Uh, oh, I have two. I have a Cheech talking and on also, the other screen. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I'm I'm rocking a dual monitor setup, so just to let you guys know, if I look this way, I'm looking at my TV screen, which has kind of the broadcast plane, so I can make sure everything's good. New setup for myself, I finally have a desk and everything, so I'm able to not look as awkward as I used to for our beginning streams. Is that mood lighting behind you? So if you get angry, it turns red. If you feel sad, it turns blue. It's it's red it right now. Happy, let, me, let me change green. it. Let me change it. Let's go green. <laughs> oh, you're sad. You're green. It has to be green. I'm mad. Purple. Green. There we go. <laughs> well, there's, 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 there's purple. <laughs> there we go. Matches the background. <laughs> but, okay, we're getting off topic here. But thank you for everyone that helps us out. Uh, also, Marty in his book. Uh, Nick Davis from Back Channel Productions. Take a look at his stuff on YouTube. Uh, he just recently let a uh, uh, the Buckshot uh, freestyle. Take a look at that. That's pretty cool during all this time. But uh, right now we're going to uh, introduce our guest. Uh, he is a very, 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 very uh, popular driver of the monster truck world. Uh, drove, uh, started off driving Devil's Dodge, uh, then having the Sun Impact truck, then also driving Devil's Dodge, my bad. And then uh, campaigned the, the, the Sun and Impact truck for many, many years sponsored truck T-Max all the way to his time in Feld when he became the two-time racing champion uh, for Batman and uh, then uh, set the world on fire being uh, one of the awesome drivers of the grinder truck. Uh, but uh, it, it's cool to say also he's a huge Steeler fan. And uh, here we go. And that is John Seesock. How you doing, bud? I'm loving the drink, guys. How you all doing tonight? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, I'm doing good. I had to, I had to, I had to uh, uh, make up for the last mistake I made when we did a podcast beforehand, and somehow I deleted it, so I had to butter it up a little bit and did a very good intro for you. But um, my, my, I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you guys having me How you me doing, on, Brad? It's going to be fun. I'm I'm doing good. It's you know as I always say, it's another good night here in Alberta, Canada. No snow. Back to work. Yesterday was my first day back to work, so I'm excited and get back to the daily grind. Feeling a little bit under the weather today. Got a small little bit of headache, so but just pushing through as always. Is that is that virus like affecting you guys up there much? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. I was shut down at my job for about. 
uh, just over a month and a half because uh, I work at a bottle depot here in Grand Prairie, Alberta, and uh, it, it's okay. it was it was rough for a while and things have been shut down. But uh, our premier um, w- basically announced that things might be starting to pick back up here in Alberta about the fourteenth. So like certain businesses will be open again and. It'll be a good thing. It's like even my church, like doing the streams on the weekends, only certain limited people are allowed to be there. So it's kind of been crazy. Yeah, that's how it is down here. It's uh, scary times, you know, but like we said before, it's we're living through something that's going to be in history books. You know, this is something that's uh, it's definitely devastating. And, uh, um, you know, if we all stick together and not be assholes, we can make it through it. You know, that's that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I heard some of the uh, p- uh, part of the state, like near Erie, is kind of opening up, and and the rest of the pretty much the state of Pennsylvania is kind of a little bit in shutdown mode. Huh? Yeah, we're still shut down. We're part of. They looped us in with the Philadelphia area, um, our, our county. So we're still under lockdown and stuff. Uh, luckily, our business plaque for our trucks um, is essential, so we're uh, we're able to stay open. Well, part of the business anyway, but. Uh, Man, it's just scary, you know. It, it, who knows what is really going on and what to believe, what not to believe, and, and it's just a, a rough time for everybody. I know, like for a lot of businesses, like especially here in Alberta, like the oil and gas industry, like with my dad, you know, right now would be uh, considered breakup time for the oil patch. You know, when everything's thawing out, the roads are too like muddy and everything. But like even when it was, you know, a little bit more frozen on the ground, things were just shut completely down. And, and the oil and gas industry up here is like the biggest industry out there. And when that oh, yeah. shuts down, even the price of gas, like, you know, for us, you know, I know it's like the different prices, like liters to gallons, but like, I think it's for us, it's under a dollar. It's like at 65 cents. I think seeing a few days ago, well, you know, I guess crude, like a drum of oil was in a negative and yeah. give it away. You know, that's never been like that. Uh, you know, it's it's just amazing how fast things could change. You know, economy going from being on top, best ever, to down this far basically overnight, um, and how it affects everybody's lives and in different ways. And you know, I had I have um, friends that uh, had some relatives pass away that they weren't able to go see um, because they they can't get in the hospital to see them, uh, or they're having funerals and. Uh, they're not actually having a funeral because of the quarantine and social distancing. And it, I mean, there's things like that, that you, you wouldn't think about, you know, how do you, you don't have a chance to say goodbye to somebody that you love. Um, Cause you're not, not out near them. I mean, it's, it's a rough time for everybody. Yeah, it is. And, and uh, a lot of people were talking about how, you know, they want to get back on the flow, get jobs, get the thing rolling. And it's just like, for Illinois, everywhere else in the state's okay except for the Chicago area. So when the Chicago area is having issues, the whole state gets combined and gets hit with it. And and uh, I guess we're on lockdown until like May thirtieth. Yeah, I mean, so it's tough. I think it's great that like, stuff that you guys do, the like, podcasts and everything. Um, it gets everybody a chance to have something to to look forward to and to still interact with each other and. Um, in this time when you can't go out and you can't be with anybody, I think it's really important what you guys do. And it's, uh, I mean, it's cool for myself to be able to be on it, but uh, you guys are doing a, a service that's um, needed for a lot of people to help them get through the day. Well, thank you. That, that means a lot. Thank you know, you. I, when, when I remember when I approached Cheech to be a part of this and when I came up with the original idea, you know, it was my original idea was like for the fans, by the fans. And, you know, we've been doing it for the last five, five years. And, you know, especially with what's gone on, the momentum that we've been able to gather up right now has been amazing. And the support of everybody it means a lot to, you know, me and Cheech. And it's been awesome what you, everybody's been uh, doing. You know, honestly, if you're going to do anything with Munson Trucks, that's the only way to do it is for the fans and by the fans. I mean, they're, they're the reason we all did what we did and do what we do. And um, yeah, it was always 100% about the fans, no matter what. I mean, it, the, and it's the hard, the, Everybody gets it. Everybody knows that. Everybody understands it. If it wasn't for the fans, we never would have been out there. We'd all have to get real jobs. Um, you know, it's it was always about them, especially like I really paid a big attention. When I had a chance to go to Poland. You know, one ticket was the price of like a um, 
well, for a family to go to a show there, it was like a month's salary for them. So people save up their money and, um, and they could spend it anywhere. And when they would come to see us, you know, it was, it's an honor to, to have something like that happen. You know, I have some really cool friends and, um, and rock bands and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, I respect all of them, but there's never, there's not anybody I'd really want to wait in line for, for an autograph. And it always blew me away that people would wait to see me or talk to me to have my autograph. And, um, it was something I was always flattered about and, and still to this day amazed about that people still write me emails and, um, and get, get to be on podcast with you guys. So uh, before we start anything, Brad, uh, before we ask some questions, we got some people that uh, want to say hi to you. Um, I'm going to screw up his name, but uh, if you know, remember, hit this guy named uh, Car Car uh, Carnold uh, Applepole, uh, A-N-A-P-O-L. Oh, yeah. He's out west. Yep. Uh, he said, uh, say hi for me, so he wanted you to say hi. Um, <laughs> He's actually okay, watching on the, uh, the YouTube stream. We're also on YouTube as well. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. And also, uh, uh, I think. Uh, it's actually kind of weird. Nobody would show up. I'm a, uh, right. Well, I think Cody's mom said, Hi, John. Mama and the Bat family loves you. I love, the, I love my Bat mom and Bat family. Cody's parents were, um, his whole family were, were the Bat family. And uh, Patrice was the our Bat mom. And, um, she's awesome. The whole family is fantastic. And when uh, Cody uh, was a uh, part was a part of my crew and stuff, uh, it was it was a family thing, and it was so cool to, to have them. And they accepted me into their family. And it's I still call her mom, and I love them guys. Yeah, I'm so proud of Cody where he's at now too. You know, he he's come a long way. His 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 mom has a and dad has a picture of Cody at um, the Astrodome with me when I was driving Southern Impact when he was, I think, 10 years old. And she put the picture, that picture of us together um, with the picture of him and I um, as world champions. And it's it's so cool to see that and um, to see you know, how he's grown up with the sport and um, then be accepted by his family. We got a couple other people. We have one from Tina Jones-Smith. She says, she says uh, Scotty says, hello, Batman. Hey, Scotty, how you doing, buddy? Uh, we also have uh, Kevin Forrester Wilkie. Hey, Scotty. Uh, he says, miss you behind the wheel. Always a class act. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. I miss being there. Uh, also, uh, um, <laughs> your son's on our. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, let's uh, let's uh, talk about, uh, you know, um, I don't know where to start, John. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. Uh, well, you deleted the first one. Uh, because, because. So I guess no one else listened to it. So, uh, let's, let's. I guess we'll start off. Uh, you know how, how did the name Sun Impact, and how did you get yourself into the monster truck world? Um, the, the name was actually Tom, By Tom Bites built the truck, the first Sun Impact, and that was the name that was on it. So I kind of stepped into it that way. Um. It, and it all started, you know, with back then. Actually, in my office at our shop, I have the very first of um, a newspaper. Back in the day when they had newspapers, um, it actually shows how old I am. They had tin where they ran the, the paper through, and it was like a, a printing process. Well, I have the original tin from back in 1989 or 88, whatever it is, that uh, we first started Monster Trucks with uh, um, the whole article and stuff, which is really cool. But... Um, yeah, it all started. I mean, when I was a kid, I, uh, I had a, I bought an old truck off my dad. It was a 74 Ford, just like Bigfoot. And uh, we, uh, me and some friends of mine, we borrowed my buddy's mom's car uh, and told her we were going to go to the mall. But we didn't tell her the mall was in Philadelphia, two hours away, and that we were going to go to a monster truck show. Um, so we drove through the, the parking lot in Philadelphia Mall. To, so he didn't want to lie to his mom. So we drove through the parking lot so he could actually say we went to the mall. And uh, we went there, and I, I saw Bob Chandler, and uh, he offered me. A, um, I was talking to him, saying how I wanted to get involved in, in the sport, and he gave me a business card, and uh, that's where Bob and I started our friendship, and um, my whole dream started. So, after you met Bob Chandler, how, what was the next step to you know getting you know behind the wheel of your truck? Like, what was the next uh, 
uh, evolution. There was a, a truck I saw for sale that, um, that Tom Bites built. Uh, and I had a little bit of money, so I was able to get it. And uh, I thought, you know, uh, how hard can it be? I mean, you get a big truck. You know, it should be easy running over the cars. Trucks are so big and stuff. And um, I had really had no idea what I was doing. And, uh, yeah, I had the truck. I was out practicing driving it around a little bit. I had a call to do a, a show, um, a car crash at a fair in Pennsylvania. And I thought it'd be a small little deal. And I ended up being a couple thousand people there. And, um, yeah, I was just totally blown away. Um, and that was the first time I hit cars. It was actually in front of people. It's kind of like on the job training. And I remember running into the cars and um, putting front tires on and then backing up and then doing it again, going a little farther, a little farther. And then about the fourth time, I made it over top of all the cars and stuff. But uh, it was it was something um, – I remember driving the truck thing and what did I get myself into? You know, like <laughs> it was such a, a scary situation because I really had no clue what I was doing, but uh, um, I guess I did something right somewhere. Now, <clears throat> when I was uh, trying to get the information here, uh, how did you get yourself with uh, uh, the guy who owned Devil's Dodge? I think he was oh, known, known for the. Uh, uh, but yeah. mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, we are, we were doing a, a show for a, a small promoter and, uh, the devil's dodge was there and, um, he, uh, we were ended up talking and he asked me if I'd fill in, um, here and there. And then we ended up, uh, driving more often for him and I parked my truck. Um, and I was driving a big horsepower devil's dodge for a while. Uh, it's all started just, um, actually started filling in, but then it, it turned into a pretty busy schedule, uh, which was fun. I mean, that truck had so much horsepower and uh, got to do a lot of cool stuff with it. It was it was a, a, my first experience with big horsepower. So talk to me about like that first moment. Like you 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 got called up to do the the car crush at the fair. You show mm -hmm. up and you're just like, oh okay, I have to crush cars in front of people the first time. What was that moment that you you hit the car the first time? What what what? What was your kind of thought in that moment when you were going up like, okay. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, back then, we had steel body trucks. So you sat inside. Um, you had a full steel body. You can put two cars nose to nose in front of you, and you couldn't see them. So you, you know, you're running out the cars. The cars disappear, and all of a sudden, it's a sudden sudden impact. <laughs> and uh, the, front of the, the front of the truck's in the air. Um and we used to drive hanging out the window. Uh, the rear steering switch was underneath the mirror, and you would pinch this, the door with your, like underneath your your arm and your on your chest. And uh, it it was a uh, I had no clue what I was doing. Um, I was my sister. I think took a hundred and some pictures. You know, she was there. Um, uh, my I met my crew chief Ed Micah there. Um, he ended up being a crew chief and long a long time friend of the family and uh, one of my best friends ever. Um, who he builds chassis now. Uh, he was a big part of uh, the grinder and stuff too. Um, you know, it was a, it was a, an experience. I mean, a, I thought it'd be a small deal. He said, a, you know, a small little town fair. There was a couple thousand people, and that was totally blown away and overwhelmed by the whole thing. Yeah, that's ah uh, man, that's pretty cool. You know, just I mean, even getting a chance to do it in front of people, you know, it got the general going to be kicking in and stuff. And uh, with the experience, let's say, with the experience that you were driving with the Devil's Dodge, uh, what got you committed to go back to Sun Impact? And uh, I believe you purchased the truck called Storm Warning, yep. or, uh, I believe. Yep. Yeah, we had an ejected. Uh, what got you going for that one? Um, the Devil's Dodge is probably the most horsepower I've ever driven. Um, it had a big old Hemi in it. And uh, even to this day, I mean, even through Batman and Grinder and stuff, I don't think anything I've driven had that much power as that truck did. Uh, the storm warning truck, um, we had an ejected 514 with a lot of compression and that thing ran good. Actually, uh, um, a couple of the Bigfoot drivers uh, actually were surprised that it wasn't a blower on it because it, it ran good, but we were able to win a lot of races because you are able to drive the truck. Um, it had to be a better driver because I didn't have the horsepower to outpower anybody. I've got you on that one, but then, and then, oh, but then you got yourself the, 
in the television stuff with like Inside Monster Jam, mm-hmm. and then you started doing a lot of uh, the, the TNN and stuff like that. Uh, how did you get connected with uh, also with uh, the, I guess I would say, your, the popular uh, 2000 Sun Impact truck? Uh, because a lot of people may, may not know that that was the second liquidator truck from uh, over there in New Jersey, yeah. correct? Yeah, Bob and I were friends for a long time, and um, he he had his stuff up for sale, and I was able to to get the truck, and uh, we put a Super Duty body on it, and then we um, and the truck ran fantastic. I mean, it was awesome. Uh, big big Ford engine in it, a lot of horsepower. We were the first ones that actually put bypass shocks next to uh, coil springs um, on that truck, which was unbelievable. Um, and it was funny too, because like back then everybody was arguing because my my thinking, you know, whether it's right or wrong, I thought if I had a truck that worked really good and I put bypass shocks next to it, I should make something that works good better. Um, and it I was on a tight budget, so I, I couldn't afford to only have bypass shock so i had to leave the suspension the way it was and just try to fine tune it with the bypasses and it worked awesome um and now like heart uh, Heart sock gunslinger uh, a lot of the guys with the coil shocks next to the bypass shocks is the way to go i mean it's such a nice ride soft ride um that truck was just uh it was fun to drive a lot of room it's able easy to crawl out the window with no problem uh it, it just was comfortable Talk about that. You know, at the end of like, your freestyle runs, you climb out and, you know, stand on the truck and wave to everybody. How did that all come about? And like the, uh, how did you like, did you have the truck on just like an idle or something? Like how did, how did that work? Well, the, it started with, uh, I, Jim Cramer used to do with Bigfoot five. He would actually hold onto the tire and it would pull the, the, the truck would pull him up and he would walk on top of the tire and stuff. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, I'm like, well, if he can do that, I can crawl out the window and stand on the roof for the truck. Um, we put the truck in first gear. I uh, trying to line it up someplace where it wouldn't hit a car, or one of the crushed cars, or it wouldn't hit some of the moguls or any of the obstacles on the track. And um, I would tell the tech officials I was going to do it. And then that, when I was done, I would point to the motor and wave my hands like to shut it off, and uh, they would shut they would shut the truck down. It didn't always work out the right way. Uh, sometimes the truck would kind of go off track a little bit. I, and one time in Baltimore at the, at the arena down there, uh, the truck ran into the, a freestyle landing ramp, a dirt ramp, and I ended up losing my balance. And I kind of ran the, off the hood of the off the roof of the truck down the windshield, down the hood to the tire to the ground in one big motion. And it made it seem like I meant to do that, but actually I was kind of running for my life because I was trying to keep my balance. But uh, um, it it was something that just seemed kind of cool, different. And then Tom, Tom Mintz started doing it on his wing, which was really neat. Right. His wing walk, that that was pretty cool. Right. Uh, I was just trying to make yourself stand out different from everybody else. And, you know, a lot of let's, – let's talk about that 2000 season because, you know, a lot of uh, – there was a lot of high notes for you, especially, uh, you know, you verbally said it on TNN that you wanted to beat Tom. Uh, you know, you, you and Scott were the main Ford guys out of the whole deal. Everyone kind of knew about the situation the year beforehand about another Ford truck and the company there that they split. But, uh, you know, with the Bigfoot situation, but with you guys, you guys were basically the flagship trucks for the Ford camp. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you got your shot, uh, uh, in those years against Tom and you did beat him in an event. Uh, what was the, mo- was that a, a motivation for a lot uh, of the guys in that, those years? That, that was awesome. Tom was like on a, a 38 round winning streak. Nobody was able to touch him. Um, he was just kicking everybody's butt. And um, yeah. And I was able to take him out and use them. Yeah. And, it was uh, it was fun. I got out of the truck, and every driver, you know, they came over. Everybody's high five and jumping up and down, and the tech officials are yelling, "Hey, get back in the truck! You guys got to go next round!" All their stuff, and uh, everybody's just so excited because somebody finally took Tom down um, because he was just unstoppable. He, he was just on such a winning streak, and that that was a, a big win for me. Um, really boosted my confidence. Uh, being an independent, you had to pick your battles. 
So I, I didn't have a big budget where I can afford to run wide open every time. So I had to watch what I did and, and tried to um, run a business because that's basically what it is. The monster trucks is a business. Yeah, I, I just look like, and the cool thing is, it wasn't just like, uh, you know, one week you were doing good, then the next week you didn't do good. It was a, like a steady increase. And you kept on telling uh, Dan Moriarty, Mor Mor I, I can't pronounce his last name, Moriarty. but uh, you kept on mentioning him. Uh, yeah, yeah. You kept on mentioning him about it. You know, I'm going to take him out. I'm going to get him. I'm going to take him out. I'm going to get him. And, you know, you'd see him in this, you know, the second round, or you're getting closer. The runs are getting closer. And then, comes all the way to, you know, Houston, you knock him out. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, also, uh, you know, uh, another thing on the 2000 was the beginning of the World Finals. Fun. And I think maybe I haven't heard a lot of maybe uh, insight to it, maybe a little bit behind the scenes. But how did back then they did they confront you saying, you know, we want you to do this world finals. This is actually going to be more of a two-part question. They confront you about it. And then when you got there, uh, what was it like? Was the hype huge? Was it – what was the atmosphere well, they, that you remember? They kinda, uh, back then they asked us – like we were great, we were racing for points and the flag and everything. Um, and that was always really cool, I thought. That was probably one of the, my favorite parts was the, the, you know, the, the racing for the checkered flag. And if you won, you took the flag off the – person who had the truck and, it, and you flew that flag to the next week and i always thought that was really really cool um and that was one thing i wanted to do was take tom's flag off him i wanted that in the worst way um and we were able to do that which was was neat but the, the world finals we it was um it, everybody was excited to be there um there was a lot of nervousness because nobody um has ever gone the speeds that we were, we were going on um, the jumps were bigger, were so much bigger back then. I remember when we were, you know, when the first time they brought a van out for us to crush, and people were like, "Oh my God, what are you going to do with that?" And then it went from vans to school buses, and then school buses on top of ten foot dirt hills. And um, you know, the very first World Finals, there was stuff that we've never seen before and never experienced the speeds, the the height of the jumps, and all that. And it uh, it, it was uh, it was cool. It was really cool, especially doing a, a live show and stuff. Um, I don't think the first one was live. I don't remember. I know two. Yeah, of them it was. It, it was live on pay per view. I remember watching okay. that actually. Okay. Um, you know, it was such a whole different world for us. It was kind of you felt like you were doing something special. Yeah, you, know, it, it, you felt like you were at a, a different rate, a level of racing when you went to that that venue, and then ha it getting to the point where there was people from all around the world, and uh, you know, it, it was just an amazing fun experience and you had so much time to be with the fans and spend time with the fans and um you know at the end of the day that's what it was all about was for, was the fans so one question that i've always had is uh on the tailgate of the truck you had a toy company maestro toys yeah how did how did that deal come about because a lot of back then it was hot wheels and everything and you had you know being independent had your own deal how did that all come about we were actually the first um like besides bigfoot we were like the first independent team to have a, a toy deal. Um, my my was our sponsor. Um, I saw him at a toy fair, and I talked to them, and uh, they were interested in uh, making the, the Southern Impact truck. Um, and that's where it's all started. There we had them, we had my we had trading cards. Um, as an independent, we uh, we kind of did a lot of things first that um, that kind of opened the door for a lot of different things. Like we were one of the, the first teams to have a chat room. Every Wednesday night, I would get online and uh, talk to the fans, answer questions and stuff like that. And uh, that was something with the sponsors. I never had a – I was never the fastest truck. Um, but I, you don't have to be uh, – you you can be a winner without crossing the finish line first, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, it's how you, you treat everybody and treat the fans. And uh, their, uh, our portfolio was pretty good, so my ace still wanted to jump on board with us. And uh, we did some stuff with that Radio Shack and – uh, that kind of opened up the door for a lot of different things. You know, they saying goes, Brad. I mean, Darren Hart Jr. didn't win a NASCAR championship, but he won most popular driver award for God knows how many years. But like you said, John, it comes around like that. And then, uh, you know, after some uh, paint jobs and uh, different looks of the Sun Impact truck, 
Uh, you talked about sponsors. You talked about toy deals. Now, you had a major sponsor, which you opened the door to now one of the most popular uh, RC uh, companies out there right now with Traxxas. And uh, when I was young, I didn't know about Traxxas. I knew the company was around, but I, I didn't know until your 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 truck came out with T Max. Yeah. And uh, how, how did that bridge happen? And uh, and because uh, I I remember one show. I don't know. It was on Speed. I think it was on Speed Channel. And I think I don't know the event, but you won that event um, with the T Max truck. Uh, how was that connection? And uh, uh, how, how was that? I've always been into RC trucks and planes and helicopters and uh, everything. I was always a big RC fanatic. Uh, and we, uh, I reached out to Traxxas back in the day about, um, I thought it'd be perfect. You know, it'd be a perfect fit to have a, a RC truck made after your truck. Um, the Hall brothers had, uh, uh, they were hooked up with um, Coyote, I think it was. Uh, they had their tank, uh, was a, a truck. Uh, RC vehicle and the truck was an RC and um, I, was, I was always a Traxxas fan and uh, it, I reached out to them after a whole bunch of um, finding out going through the, the trying to get a sponsor is hard it's not a, a easy hey make a phone call and say hey I'm so and so how about sponsor my truck it takes a lot of work and um, a lot of uh, paperwork a lot of uh, butt kissing and basically to, to try to get a good sponsor and then once you get a sponsor it takes a lot of work to keep them uh, so I was trying to show tracks that would be a good deal for us and the attention that we would help bring the hobby stores. We did uh, displays at the hobby stores in different cities that we went to. And uh, they came on board a little bit at a time and eventually going into the whole team axe truck. Um, but it was something we did. They give us toys to give away at uh, raffle off at different shows. And, um, you know, they'd pick a fan out of the crowd and we would hand them a, a team axe truck. And, uh, we would do demos at the hobby stores and I would race the fans and, um, and actually went to Traxxas's office a bunch of times and learned how to tune the vehicles and, and how to really uh, get the most out of them. So it was, it was a fun thing to do. I mean, it, driving a sponsored vehicle and represent a company is so cool because it's not just about yourself. You're representing all the people that work at that factory and they take ownership in it and stuff. And it's something neat to be part of. So, you know, through, throughout the many years, you, you were an independent owner, owned your own team, drove the truck, everything. And then in the later years, you know, around, you know, the, I'm not too sure when you moved to Fell, but you started driving the Batman truck. How did the 2007, how did that transition happen from, you know, doing it yourself for all these years and then working with uh, Feld Entertainment? Um, got a phone call and, uh, uh, there was some stuff that was going on in my life at that time. And uh, let's see how to trigger that. Hmm, that's a good question. How to, how to answer it. Um, <laughs> there was some stuff that was going on in my life at that time. And I got a phone call and they uh, felt said to, um, actually it was a uh, clear channel, I think at the time. Um, they said, Hey, go home and be with your sons. And Monday morning you start driving for us. And uh, I did that. Uh, I made a, a switch real quick, and uh, I started. I think I started driving the Suzuki truck was the first one I drove for Feld. Uh, we took up to Bangor, Maine, and we kicked butt in it, and uh, did some stuff in Canada with it. And uh, that year, I ended up uh, piling the Batman truck uh, for the first tour in '07, and we ended up winning the Georgia Dome, which was our first huge stadium win. Um, with that truck and then that took us on into the world championship. Yeah, you know, that's pretty cool doing that. And everyone and most of it you sold you sold your previous team to Brandon the Guard down in Louisiana and they they kept your name and kept all that going on. But uh just out of the box you you get to the land with Batman and and uh you win the first racing title and and then not just doing that, your first two years, you are, you become a world champion. And, uh, and what was, I thought it was pretty cool, but I think another cool story, you know, I'm going to continue talking about that. I'll ask that question later. Uh, with the Batman truck, it's completely different than your sudden impact and sudden impact truck, but, uh, the visual, uh, 
Uh, I think how awesome uh, Clear Channel trusts your driving instincts on pretty much the most expensive body they had. Yeah, that's uh, then uh, and <laughs> <laughs> than any other truck out there. But uh, because when I say it's not so different, because um, I think uh, your T Max and Batman were both Patrick Chassis trucks. Yes. Uh, so I mean, offhand, you know, you start. You, I mean, it was like going back on a horse, riding on a bicycle. But visually, uh, did you have to get a custom inside the cab? Because was was the window? Uh, a little bit smaller than the pickup truck. Correct? Oh yeah, yeah. The visibility is a lot different in the Batman truck. Um, you're able to see a little bit better down through the firewall, uh, but the side windows and the windshield itself was a lot smaller, um, and the cage itself was really small to fit that body. That there was only a couple trucks that that, that couple chassis that that body would actually fit on because it was it needed a special cage, and it was pretty tight. Um, but it was comfortable though. Like I've always been comfortable in the trucks i felt at home behind the wheel and uh i always did things a little differently than uh, some people like i would i used an r3 as a helmet restraint um but i also wore a neck collar at the same time uh which that that i'm 54 now and i feel really good um for bouncing around in a truck for over half of my life um and it was because of things like, like wearing a neck collar and, and going just a little bit extra um, we had hooker harnesses uh, where their, their, their stuff kept me so safe in the seats. Uh, there, there's a lot of a lot of things that help progress that whole thing. But, um, you know, being comfortable in a truck was a big part of it. And like you said, the Batman truck, man, that thing was so – the body was one of a kind. It was so expensive that I always had to watch what I did. I had to be careful and um, pick my battles and try to win but not destroy the truck. Uh which there's so many times I just wanted to <laughs> just go out and have fun, but I had to, you know, I worked for a company, so I had to do what I was told. So talk about, you know, the, the first racing championship in 2007, you know, being a competitor at the first world finals, you know, in your own, in your own equipment and, you know, go, throughout the years, you know, talk about how special that was, you know, being able to win that championship. Um, God, it's, yeah, I don't even know where to begin on that one. There was, so many stories behind that whole thing. Uh, the you, no matter what you do, you want to try to be the best that you possibly can, and to be a world champion was was amazing. You know, it was a dream come true for one. Uh, I was doing donuts after I won because I didn't know what to do. I, I'm sitting in a truck thinking, okay, now what? I'm a world champion. And I don't know what to do. Uh, so I'm going to do donuts for a while till I calm down. <laughs> um, the Comparing it to World Finals 1, uh, there's a story, I don't know if everybody might know, I think Cheech knows about it because we talked about it, but um, after the first World Finals, we did a show in Stafford Springs, Connecticut. And during the pit party, the O'Connor family came up to me and they gave me a bottle of champagne and they said that they don't care what anybody says, they felt that I was a real, real world champion. And they gave it to me and they autographed it. And I told him that when I win the world championship, I'm going to come back up here and we're going to crack this open and we're going to drink it together. Well, for 10 years, when you walked into my house, that bottle sat on top of one of my trophy cases and I won. And after I won that night racing and I'm, I'm back at the hotel room and I'm kind of going over everything in my head, I'm thinking, oh, shit, you know, I promised this family I was going <laughs> to uh, do this and I wanted to make it happen. So I, I contacted uh, Andrew Palachko. A couple other guys from Clear Channel, and uh, they helped us help me track that family down. And we invited them to a, a show, the, the next show, right after the, we won the World Finals with Stafford Springs. And uh, I actually drove Blue Thunder there, and it was Tom. Tom was there. Dennis was there. It was the first time we were all together since the World Finals, and we uh, we threw down some heck of runs. We all three of us just going thirties in freestyle. Um, but after the, the show, uh, Joe Lowe, uh, helped invite the family down to the track, and I made a little speech about how I made a promise 10 years ago that when I won the World Championship, I was going to crack this bottle open with people that gave it to me, and uh, we kept that promise. And uh, that that was uh, one of the – I mean, there's a million things that were so special about that night, but that was one cool thing to be able to keep that promise that I made. It was it was kind of special. You know, there was a lot of things like uh, – uh, 
you know, that was Grave Digger's 25th anniversary yeah. show. And uh, he kind of knocked that out of the park. <laughs> yeah, I, love I love Dennis to death, but uh, yeah, it, it, it had to happen. <laughs> I think it was pretty cool also. Like, I, I thought that those seven championship was cool, but I thought the 08 was more meaningful. This is me as a, I'm going as a fan here, meaningful because I remember back in those time periods, I think everyone thought that your championship was just going to be a one and done a fluke, uh, you know, he wasn't getting the respect like other drivers were getting the like, you know, their championship deal in the fan and some of the fan domain seeing that stuff. But when you got the championship the following year, I think you shut up a lot of haters and letting it be clear that you were there. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, and again, before I even say anything about it, you know, I had the easy part. I was holding the steering wheel. It was the, the crew guys that deserve the credit. They're the ones that, that make it happen. You know, um, yeah, I'm the one out front. I'm the one holding the wheel. But, man, if it wasn't for the crew, there's no way we would have won any of those championships, mm -hmm. especially if you know behind the scenes. So, um, like the first year, I was the, I was the second. Was a, each truck has – each trailer has two trucks in it, an A truck and a B truck. I had the Batman truck and I wasn't the lead truck. So the lead truck gets all the good parts and gets everything it needs. And I was, had the leftovers. So I didn't have a gear selection that we wanted. I, I um, the truck was good and it was safe. Uh, but there were just things that I wish I could have done differently. Uh, but we did the best we could, and, which is a testament to the crew for how hard they worked that we were able to take that championship. Um, the second year, I didn't even know we won. I was so focused on what I was doing and the crew was working so hard, keeping that truck together. Um, you know, we won, we beat Jimmy Creed in the end and uh, they're saying, okay, you won. I'm like, okay, who do we have next? And they're like, you won. And I'm like, okay, what lane do we got? And they're like, get out of the truck, idiot. You're a bull champion. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I had no idea. So like, if you watch that race, you'll see us driving off the track. Cause I thought we had more rounds to go yet. And then Cody and I came running out. Um, because I, I had no clue that we were world champions again. I was so focused on what I was doing um, that we, we won, and I didn't even know it. Oh, my goodness. That's funny. It's like you cross the line. Okay, who do we got next? Who do we got next? Wait a second. Oh. You won? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Co Cody used to leave notes in my truck all the time. And uh, some I can't – most of them I can't say on here because uh, there might be some people <laughs> they might offend. Uh, but <laughs> he would always leave these little notes in – and stuff and um when he when we were doing this and when we were racing like the second year he's like he would come up and he'd ask what everything was i'd tell him if i wanted something changed in a truck and then he'd, he'd make his he, like run, running down that track at that speed and trying to win it, there's a lot going on and you have to really have faith in your crew guys um that's why i said it you know i had the easy part holding the steering wheel those guys kept the truck 100 percent. they kept me calm kept my head on straight uh, did everything they could do to get that championship. So, it, you know, when I used to say how time how it was a team, it, it really was a team. It wasn't just me out there holding the steering wheel um, and winning. Um, they're, they're the guys that deserve the credit. When uh, Cody was saying how you won, like it, I was really like, okay, yeah, who's next? And then I, I started getting a little pissy with him. I'm like, okay, I get it. We won. Who's next? And I like, get out of the truck. You did your champion. Oh, okay. <laughs> But talk about your crew. You had some awesome guys wrenching for those trucks and championships. And even even further down the line, you had uh, some – let's talk about the crew guys. Because uh, even when you were with the grinder team, uh, you had probably one of the top-notch chassis builders right now uh, producing chassis for most of the monster truck teams. And uh, I, I know a friend of mine, John Fitchett, he's doing the, the, the uh, Spin Master uh, Dragonoid or whatever that truck is, Crew Chief. But he he did your truck, I think, in 2014, uh, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah. Uh, so you have a lot of crew guys. Yeah, Eddie, um, I always seem like I would always end up getting new guys, and I'd have to teach them as we were going. So, um except for Eddie. Eddie was at the very first car crush I ever did. Uh, we were on time friends and um, Mike Wells asked about, you know, trying to get a, 
uh, when, I, when I've had the chance to do the grinder, um, they asked why I had one for a crew, and I said I'd like to have Ed. And Ed didn't work for Monster Jam at that time. And um, we were able to get him part of it. And uh, like you said, now he's one of the best chassis builders out there. Um, phenomenal welder and fabricator and and, uh, and, j- and an all-around good guy. Uh, he gets it. You know, it's all about the fans, and he would do whatever it takes to make sure that the truck was 110% for the fans. Um, you know, Cody, Fitchett, uh, uh, Tanner, um, you know, Squirt, uh, all them guys, Howie. You know, we ended up having some great crew guys over the years that are just uh, so much fun to be on the road with and uh, so trustworthy. And that was a big thing was uh, having people you could trust. So you, you, you went from, you know, the, the Batman team to world championships and, and, you know, the later time you were dri- starting to drive grinder, which, you know, turned to be a three truck team. How did that transition happen? Because, you know, you had Lupe as the, the, the main kind of, that was his identity for a long time. Then they added you and Frank. How did all that happen? Um, I heard that they were going to put a second truck on. And I said that I thought um, I would like to be part of it. Uh, events, all parts, found out that I was interested. And they, uh, uh, Jamie Johnson, uh, she's like, yeah, you know, we want to have John part of that. Uh, and it was such a, it was a good fit. That, that truck was so much fun. Um, and it was called, they used to call me the, the people's champion, which is something I was really proud of. And then they tagged that truck as the people's truck. Um, and being teammates with Lupe and Frank, um, it was so much fun and doing all the displays and the, and the media and everything that went with it, all the videos and, uh, the commercials and stuff. It, it was a blast. And that truck was so well re- received everywhere it went. And it, it represented everybody that was out there working hard every day to do what they had to do to provide for their family. Uh, you know, the tagline of inspire, serve and grow was advances thing for their truck. Cause they wanted to inspire people. They wanted to serve the public and they wanted the company to grow. Uh, and it was something that I, felt like I was home with it. Kind of like I did with the Traxxas. I felt um, part of something special with that whole thing. Yeah, because when we had uh, Frank about a few episodes ago, they put together, I think, Advanced Auto Parts, and what they did was they put together probably, the I would say, the second best team outside of Gravedigger, I think, I believed, in the Monster Jam area, I mean, Max D, you would say Tom and Neil, but you guys had a good group, you, Frank, and Lupe. And it seemed like every single time if there was a grinder truck on the schedule, doesn't matter if it was one of you three, you're going to have a top-notch truck. Uh, I remember seeing you a lot during your times driving the grinder truck in Pittsburgh and uh, in some other areas, and – no, no doubt about it. There was, you know, you were in the field of favorites to win because of those, because of those grinder trucks. And also, I always thought that was pretty cool that every single show you would have a sponsor, and you would put the sponsor in the back of the tailgate. Yeah. And then, uh, it's just uh, uh, a lot of things that you have done. I thought was awesome because uh, I always thought that uh. Like you said, with having that, you felt a felt in home. But you went above and beyond with that truck, and I thought that was pretty awesome. It, it was so much fun. It uh, everybody we worked with, I, we, I did a lot of a lot of videos with them guys and um, behind the scenes stuff, and uh, a lot of yeah, their main headquarters was in Roanoke, Virginia, so that's only like four hours from where I live, five hours. So we would go down there a lot and shoot a lot of videos and. The TV crew would follow us around, and uh, they came here to my hometown, and then we did a uh, a show called Airing It Out with John Seasock there. So there was a episode with myself, an episode with Dennis um, that Advanced Auto Parts did back in the day. Uh, they followed me around to some school visits into my home school, and uh, I was able to be on the Wall of Fame there, and they they filmed that, and a lot of a lot of behind the scene cool things that we had a chance to do. But the the whole grinder thing was a family you know we would um we would host uh events for them uh it would be the, we would go and be the the this opening speaker at the at these events and uh go down to the nascar hall of fame and and do an autographs next to kyle petty and uh roush and everybody down there and 
uh, just the, the whole the whole atmosphere was a whole different world. It you know you did a lot of media, um, a lot of meet and greets, and still all the hospital visits and everything that we would do too. On top of everything, uh, the truck was so much fun to drive. Uh, my crew was fantastic, and uh, it, it was a blast representing that whole thing. And um, it, it just I can't even put it in words how cool it was. You know, it's something I, I I'm still in contact with a lot of them guys. Uh, from advanced and uh you know it's uh it was a family atmosphere that when you went to a store that the, all the, everybody that worked at the store felt like they were part of something when you went to a distribution center they they welcomed you with open arms because you were representing them guys so there was, a, there was a lot of ownership on that truck the one cool thing i remember with your time with the grinder is the uh the encore at the world finals the three truck encore and like even just like the the big encores with multiple trucks always like intrigued me. And like, did you guys like plan like the hits beforehand? Like, how did that happen? Yeah, they have a um, all the, everything. Well, anything we would always like even freestyle. We would start out with a plan, um, and then have a plan B, plan C, plan D. Because sometimes you take a bad bounce and things don't work out the way you have planned. Um, but we had a choreograph what we, what on, we wanted to do, and uh, we tried to pull it off. But you get couple trucks on the same track it, it gets a little a little hectic out there uh but we, we have a thought of how we what we're doing and we want to try to get that one right perfect shot um that the cameraman can get all the trucks in the air and with the fireworks going off and stuff there's a, a lot of thought that goes into those encores uh, cheech it looks like you got a little furry was... friend with you there yeah draco the dragonator my dog <laughs> uh... <laughs> He popped through the door and just wanted to say hi. So, okay, buddy. Now he's not gonna bother. He's gonna bother me the whole time, but it's okay. He's okay. <laughs> All right. You want to interview him? What do you? Any questions you want to ask him? <laughs> no. Actually, okay. there's a question on our chat here for Mr. Kevin Willicky. Uh, so he says it's a two-part question, if possible. What would you deem the highlight of your career behind the wheel? Oh. And then what would be your favorite part of being in the industry? Um, highlight. Uh, God, there, there's been so many of them. Um, you know, of course, the championships were up there. But uh, I can say, I guess the, the highlight of being behind the wheel would be the, uh, the same thing about the, the second question. It would be the fans. You know, I love driving the truck. I love the adrenaline. I love the power. Um, I love being in control. Uh, I just, I loved everything about it. I felt so comfortable behind the wheel. Um, but I also felt comfortable with the fans. And and that would be the second part of the question was the, the fans. Um, we have always said that and we always meant it. But it was if it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't have been out there and we wouldn't be doing what we were doing. You know, they could spend their money anywhere they wanted to, and they came to see us, which is amazing. Uh, people would wait for an autograph from us and uh, wait in line. At, heck, at the Silver Dome, the last show at the Silver Dome, the sun was coming up. It was 6 o'clock in the morning. We are doing autographs from the night before. Uh, and people waited in line. People were falling asleep in the autograph line. It was crazy. Uh, to have something, to experience something like that, or be in front of 70,000 people at a stadium screaming and um, – you know, winning a world finals and standing in front of that crowd. It, it, it's just, a, it's amazing. It's a dream come true. And um, not to get all sappy and religious or anything, but man, I thank God every morning and every night for them opportunities and uh, the experiences I had a chance to have. I remember being in stadiums or in arenas and we'd stand on top of a tire for introductions in the national anthem. And I would get all teary eyed because I'm living a dream. Uh, and it, none of that stuff would have ever happened if it wasn't for the fans and the support they've given us. So if I had to answer both questions, I could do with you know, the fans. You know, it's another cool thing. Also, I I remember doing track crewing, and uh, uh, for a while, you guys you you were driving the grinder truck, and and all I saw was you know the 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 you just treat everyone like you're one of the few drivers I have known that will talk to someone and be like you're friends with them for 20 years, you know, and, and then, and then it makes the fans feel great about everything. And I remember seeing you and meeting you for the first time 
And I think in 2009, Indianapolis, when they did the first uh, Lucas Oil Stadium show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I won that one. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, I remember you kept on going, and Tom thought it was only a one-lapper. Yep. And he just – he's going to screw up I there. But, it, right? uh, <laughs> still, uh, I had uh, spanked anyway. I had spanked anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, you still won that, but I always thought that was cool because I, I, you know, one of the few drivers I've took a picture with. But you talked to me like you knew me for like twenty years. Well, and I always thought that I, was I pretty cool. Did know you for about twenty years. I mean, a lot of you guys were when we first started doing the chat room. A lot of you guys were part of that whole thing, um, and it's. You know, I, I always pictured my boys, you know, if somebody, if they wanted to meet somebody, I'd want them that somebody take the time to talk to them, you know, at an out, if they're doing autographs, actually talk to the person, look at them in the eye and um, have a conversation, make it a special experience for them, not just to sign a paper and throw it at them. Um, I really was honored that anybody would ever wait in line for me. We were in Texas the one time and uh, doing a display at Advanced Auto Parts. And my crew called me. The display was from like two to four, I think, or two to six. And uh, they're like, "Hey, man, you need to get over here. This place is is crazy." And it was like 12 o'clock, and, uh, and I thought they were joking. I thought they were going to come to buy lunch. Um, I got there, and it, the line was wrapped around the inside of the store, um, out the store, down the street, and around the back of the building. The autograph line was waiting, and it was like twelve o'clock. I'm like, oh man. So we started doing autographs real fast and, and, you know, started the whole thing. And it was that the line stayed that busy the whole six hours that we were there. Um, you know, it, in my opinion, if, it, you know, everybody, all of us are role models to somebody. Um, and you can you can change people's lives by, you know, saying thank you or, or you're welcome, or opening the door for somebody. Or um, It doesn't cost nothing to be nice and it doesn't cost anybody to actually pay attention to somebody you know it's um you can make a difference in people's lives without you know a whole lot of effort and i always wanted to try to do it i always wanted to try to inspire somebody to follow their dreams or um i came from a big family and with no money um i live in a small town pennsylvania that i'm very proud of where i live um but it's the coal region everybody works hard there and stuff so uh i was proof that you can be what you want to be and dreams do come true if you work hard i mean i uh, worked really hard at it and became a two-time world racing champion. And and that's one thing that, you know, I remember seeing you drive the sudden impact truck as a kid. You were always my favorite because you were, like, just the aura that you had, you know, when I was a kid watching you on TV, it was like, okay, this is a guy that I'm going to get behind. And every time that you, I watched you, it was like, I was always cheering. I had, you know, a uh, sudden impact toy and I was always cheering for you whenever you were on the TV. So I can definitely like attest to that, you know, being a fan of yours for all, for as many years as I have. Yeah, and I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate the support that every, all the fans have given me. You know, I, 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 I'm good friends with Gary Porter and I always wanted to um, be like, kind of like Gary on certain things. Like I tried to, uh, I've seen guys were, were at a certain place in their career and they were there for a reason. And Gary was a guy that he would, you wouldn't beat him. You'd beat yourself trying to trying to beat him. And I, I wanted to be like that. I wanted when I pull up to the line, I didn't have to do nothing. That if somebody wanted to beat me that bad, that they would screw up. And it got to the point that it would be like that. And uh, Mike Wales, uh, you know, God rest his soul, he, he was a, a, an awesome man, and he would yell at me. He said, "Like you're making it look too easy. Um, I was too smooth when I was driving. Uh, it and it, it was." I was trying to copy a Gary Porter, you know, his driving style of just the, you know, Gary never had blood in his veins. He had ice. And when you, it was, he would, you would beat yourself trying to beat him. And I wanted to be like that. And, um, the, to have the fans, uh, support that whole thing. And, uh, I'm sorry, I'm babbling now. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> no worries, man. Uh, it, it's, I can't even put it in words how it feels to have, uh, you know, fans and have people that actually look up to you and, and do that. Uh, yeah, and, and and drivers and friends too. I mean, you know, there's so many cool guys out there that did this whole thing and did it back in the beginning. And um, Scott Ford, the, he was uh, one of the great body guys, uh, part of Monster Jam. You know, we sat up one night and we made the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle body. Um, him and Andy and myself and uh, out there in uh, in Chicago, and 
uh, we were talking the other day, he called in about the family, uh, what it meant and how the guys were so tight. And uh, there's some awesome drivers out there now with a lot of skills. And, you know, it's amazing what, what some of these guys are doing. But the, they never had the chance to have that real family niche that like Mike Wine and Nick Rossi, uh, you know, Bob Chandler, you know, Dennis, and like all the Gary Porter, Wiggins, all the old guys um, that, that we have. I mean, it, you know, I could make a phone call now and I know if I needed something, you know, Mike Wine would be here in a heartbeat uh, and vice versa. I mean, it's, it's that family that's just uh, amazing. It's something that was so cool to be part of. So we got, I got two parts here, Brad. Uh, yep. One's a question, but one's a, uh, a comment. Uh, remember a gentleman named Jeremy Dishman who drove the Ramian, the ammunition truck? Oh, yeah. Uh, he said it was always fun running with you. Yeah, Jeremy's a great guy. Uh, was, Jeremy's on watching a really right now. Really good driver. Um, really good. All the Ram guys, man. Those, that's, that's a tough team. You knew every time they, they were going to be someplace where you're at, you're going to have to work hard to try to get a win because uh, they, they can't out horsepower them. Um, you just got to try to outdrive them, and that's hard to do because they're fantastic drivers. And the second one is uh, this is David Gardner. He said, who was your biggest imp imp um, inspiration Sorry, uh, inspiration to get involved in monster trucks and who impressed you? Okay, so that's a two-parter, I guess. Uh, who was your biggest inspiration to get involved in the monster trucks? And who impresses you in today's monster truck world? Um, my biggest inspiration would have to be Bigfoot, Bob Chandler. You know, he's the one that started it, and that's what started my dream. Um, you know, I had a 74 Ford just like, like Bigfoot 1 was. Um, it was funny. I, I was driving out of Frackville the one day when, in my, my pickup truck, and there was a station wagon full of kids, and uh, uh, we are just starting to get out of town, and uh, kids were hanging out the windows and stuff, and one kid yelled, look, Daddy, Bigfoot. And I remember thinking, yeah, I, I wish, you know, and then – a couple years later, I'm actually racing against Bigfoot and you know, driving Bigfoot five and stuff like that. Uh, but my inspiration would be Chandler or Bigfoot. Um, and what was the second part? The, uh, who impresses, uh, who impresses, who impresses the you these days? Um, yeah. Got all of them. You know, Ryan and Adam are doing a fantastic job. And, and to see them guys grow up uh, through through the sport, um, uh, Tyler, um uh, every, all of them that are out there. I mean, anybody who's out there is out there for a reason. Uh, and they all got such amazing skills now. Um, uh, Cody, uh, and Todd LaDuke, uh, yeah, all, all them guys. I mean, every, I can't just say just one. I mean, everybody's got their own personality. Everybody's got their, their little niche in the world. And, um, I think what impresses me more than driving is what they do when they're not holding the steering wheel. Because uh, that's the easiest part of what we do is holding the steering wheel. Everything else is is more important. Um, you know how they are with the fans and uh, interaction and stuff like that. Because that, if you, if I talked to Cody a lot, and that was one thing I always beat in his head about making sure you take time for the fans, and that's what it's all about. So this question is from Mr. Austin Spence. Um, his question is: I've heard that the old sudden impact chassis is still lying around. Any chances of seeing Bucket climb in the seat someday? <laughs> okay. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, Bucket is my son, Kyle. Um, we call him Bucket because he had a head like a five-gallon bucket. Um, that's that's his nickname. But Kyle is buying or bought my old chassis back. Uh, so we're going to help him put it together. And uh, I told him the only stipulation is I want to drive it. But uh, I know he, wants, he has aspirations to, to drive it also. So um yeah the the old chassis is going to be coming back home and uh we're going to be putting it together uh we've talked to uh, Ed, Mike, <clears throat> a lot eddie and i talk all the time about uh putting a truck together and stuff and um so you never really know know what the future has to hold for me but uh you know holding the steering wheel will be something i'd like to do again okay cheech get the pen and paper ready i'm going to ask our two important questions that we always like to ask our guests Alrighty, and and the, the, these are staples. Cheech might have asked you this on the uh, you know deleted recording that he ended up deleting, but I'm not too sure. Um, question there was like number a few answers I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> question number one, Mr. Yes, John Seesock, what is your favorite kind of pie? Key lime. 
Key Lime is that's how many did we? That's that's the first one we have for Key Lime. That was okay. not that, that was actually I was about to put number two down, but I remember putting that. So uh, yeah, you mean that was probably John's the, answer. The, 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 yeah, okay. yeah, the ones right. that aliens took. And then here is our second question. Um, are you a part of Team Eggnog or do you hate eggnog? Um, I could go either way. Ooh, so I, I, Ooh. You know, I, I can take it. I cannot take it. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm more team. Um, I like alcohol. So, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So actually, uh, you are in a selective group with one other person, and that would be Rebecca Schnell. Oh, okay. Uh, See, so. You know, there's, there's egg, egg, the, everything's good if it has, if it's um, topped off enough with the right amount of uh, adult beverages. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, a little eggnog with the right nip in it's pretty good. See, and, and yes. that question so, goes back to the Norman brothers, Philip and Christian. Those guys are funny. I love them guys. Um, they come to visit me a lot when they when they're going through town and a. Uh, um, you know, hang out at the shop. We went to dinner a couple times, and uh, there are two guys that I am unbelievably proud of. Uh, you see, Chris, you see both of them where they are now, and uh, um, man, I love them guys to death. You know, and they're they're two guys too that would uh, do anything for their fans. Um, there's so many guys out there I'm so proud of, and I was just watching an interview today with Tanner, uh, with his Tannerite uh, mega truck and stuff, and um. Yeah, you know, it's it's cool to see these guys grow up and uh, watch them follow their dreams. Well, like I was we, going to say, speaking of alcoholic beverages, I've been sipping on a little something tonight. So, <laughs> yeah, that'll point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm without. <laughs> but no, those those guys are awesome. I that, have. I'm still trying to set a good example. I have uh, water. Water. <laughs> 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 but that, that, that question with the eggnog goes back to an episode that we did with them and I, I, I can't do eggnog I can't do it, that stuff is disgusting <laughs> well if you get thirsty enough uh, I mean, we, the taste of... we drank Bones Farm so um, <laughs> one time. So you, if you get thirsty enough you'll drink anything um, another uh, question so... um, well Cheech go ahead oh I was about to probably ask that this I was gonna go with the question also with that David Gardner again. He said, "If you had one final race, who was your opposing? Who would be in the opposing lane?" Uh. So basically, who would you face as your dream match if you still Cody? Because you faced a lot of. That'd be cool. Yeah, I would like to race Cody. Um, I think that would be a good race. Uh, I know my my oldest son wants to race me, um, but uh. And I'd like to race him too, just so I could show him that uh, I taught him everything he knows, but I didn't teach him everything that I know. Uh, <laughs> but Cody, I think, uh, is somebody I would love to pull up one side of. Um, just because I have a lot of respect for him and uh, admire his style and how smooth he is. And I think that would be a, a good, fun driver's race. Um, here's my question Did you guys face oh. each other in 2000? Oh, sorry, Brad, one second. Uh, did you guys face each other in 2014? No. Because I knew he got uh, behind the wheel. I never had a chance to race against him. Um, and especially now to see where he's at now, I would love to to have that opportunity. Uh, it'd be cool if you had a – I mean, it's, it's kind of sad, but you can build 10 trucks at the same time, and they're going to react 10 different ways. Um, and you put 10 different drivers in them, and each one – each truck's going to act another 10 different ways. But it'd be cool to have, like, a – an IROC series where a lot of the drivers came back and you had 10 trucks that were as close to being the same as possible. Um, and, and to be able to race this heads up when, when it comes down to driving style, like that, that would be kind of fun to do. Uh, just to uh, just play, make an even playing field for everybody right across the board and see who can outdrive each other. Okay, so so here's my question. So I don't know if you remember back in the day, Monster Truck Radio with Jeff Richards. Um, yes. He would have the segment Rental Car Stories. And you know, we've had a few. I remember we got a few from Mike Wine when we've had him on. Do you have any Rental Car Stories that you can say? 
that I can say. Yeah, um, that 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 you're not going to get in trouble for by certain companies. Well, you, you always hear about the blacklist. Uh, they really do have them. Um, <laughs> I've been on three of them. Um, uh, an airbag in a new Ford pickup truck costs two thousand dollars to get replaced overnight. If one would happen to pop in an Astrodome <laughs> uh, uh, show um, the night before, uh, Saran Wrap is um, a good friend of a uh, rental cars. Uh, if you have, if you happen to have a door that would slightly fall off of a rental vehicle because of a accidentally hitting a turning tire on a track per se, um, they would hold back on. And if you park the car in the back of the return area, you can probably get away with it. You know, rumor has it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've heard of such things happening. Um, uh, yeah. There, there, Probably the biggest thing is those, that blacklist really does exist, and it's kind of <laughs> funny when you stand there and they look at you and look at the sh- at the screen and look at you and look at the screen and look at your driver's license and say, "Yeah, uh, ain't happening." <laughs> uh, but yeah, that stuff is that that is actually all true stuff. I mean, it's uh, rental cars are fun. I would not recommend buying them because um, there's a lot of idiots like us out there, uh, but they are a lot of fun. See, I'm just trying to figure out how you'd make a uh, airbag explode in the stadium. I'm trying to think of how that would happen. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if there was, like, it's just, it's just hypothetically say that there was a uh, tough truck close, and hypothetically <laughs> Ford was, might have been the sponsor of the venue, and say they happened to have left the keys in the vehicle the night before the the show and you hypothetically see the truck <laughs> driving on the tough truck course per se and uh the whoopty doos are a little too big for a stock vehicle and an airbag might happen to go off. Um you know just saying. I mean things happen. Yeah. It's possible. Stranger things have happened definitely. Yeah uh we <laughs> so we're at we were at the show at one time and uh a fellow driver of ours, uh, there was a bunch of race cars on the infield. And he said, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. the guy was here and told you you could drive these cars around the racetrack if you want. That's where he left the keys in them. So some of us got in the vehicles and we were driving around the racetrack until the cops came and um, <laughs> said that we can't do that, that we weren't allowed to do that, and we were in trouble for doing that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of great – behind the scenes stories that uh, uh are not for all of it, all ages um, see, see I, I feel like mike wine was probably behind some of these you know mike and i go way 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 back and i love mike to death and um he was off he was out of picture for a couple of years and i was in houston everything seems like it happens in houston and i hear him on the, on the, getting interviewed i'm like holy shit how, how do you get out of state <laughs> and i didn't think it was out of jersey um, and then I, I ran out and I saw him and we started hugging and, you know, and started reminiscing and, um, but he, he, there's always a good time to be had when he's around. Um, you know, it, he's, he's just a great guy, a great driver and a, a great father. I babysat his kids the one time and, uh, I gave him all tattoos, like my tattoos with Sharpie and stuff, his daughters. And, um, we ate pizza and drank soda and they were up all night and his, his wife never trusted me with his daughters again after that, but. Um, yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> they, they were all tatted up. It was awesome. And, <laughs> and outside of the monster trucks, uh, you know, a lot of people may not know that you uh, uh do a lot. Of, I mean, I, do you still have a street bike? Uh, you, know, um, you did some stuff yeah. on that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another uh nice monster truck driver by day, asshole tattoo stuff driver by night. <laughs> um. <laughs> He's... Uh, yeah, it was funny. I, I, I would get yelled at all the time, too, by parents. And uh, I always have to have disclaimers. You know, kids don't do this at home. So I would take pictures of doing stunts um, and not wear a helmet for a magazine or whatever. And uh, then I would get yelled at for setting bad examples. Just like I would, I would get yelled at for roof walking by some of the, some of the parents because of uh, setting a bad example. That, so I'd have to make it, a, you know, 
disclaimer, please don't climb out of your monster truck and sit on a roof at home. It's not safe. Very professional. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty cool. I mean, though you, I seen the videos and stuff like that, and and uh, you know, it, and also uh, maybe people want to know what you've been doing today. Uh, you know, since you stepped out of the monster truck world, um, we only, uh, we started a business called Black Rock Trucks and Equipment. Uh, we have a big twelve thousand square foot shop in Frackville, and uh, build a lot of custom jeeps and jacked up trucks, um, fire trucks, and do repairs and stuff like that. But uh, um, yeah, I'm actually getting ready to our, my championship thrones. I have it, I have, and we're gonna take them out there and put them on display so the fans can come out and see them and sit in them and get their picture taken and stuff. And there's a uh, a lot of fiberglass hanging around that Kyle had that he hung up the like my old grinder which from the backflip in Philly. Um, yeah, a lot of posters on the walls and stuff like that. So we I spent all my time out there at the shop and uh, uh, building some cool stuff. And uh, I've got a bunch of guys that work for me, and uh, you know they're that's uh, trying to um, just have fun and try to uh, provide for my family. Uh, we have uh, a Mike Wine citing in the comments. Uh, he <laughs> says, "I'm sh I'm shocked. I've hung around him. I'm such an angel. Love John like a brother. I love Mike to death. I mean, Mike is awesome." Um, you know, it's you. You won't find a better guy out there, on any level. Uh, him and his family are just amazing, um, great people. And I, I would love Mike and I always talked about it, having a team and uh, me driving and, and Mike crewing for me. Uh, when he did crew for me out in the Vegas, it, it was it was so much fun, and I would love to be back on the road with him again. Some of the stories that he's told so, me yeah. and Cheech has, have left me in tears. Oh yeah, there's a. Uh, I'm still trying uh, to be that nice uh, people's champion, so I can watch what I say. Or uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, there's a lot of good stories. <laughs> so uh, we got a couple of people asking about: Are you thinking about coming to the Hall of Fame? Um, I would like to. Uh, uh, I I just um, starting that business. My schedule wasn't able to let me. Um, I would love to go out there. I would love to be part of that and, and see everybody. Um, uh, hopefully someday I get lucky enough to be, be up there with them guys. It'd be an honor. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to get out there and, and see that. It's it looks really cool. So as we start to wind down, like I I have uh, one question myself. Um, you know, besides like monster trucks, do you watch any other forms of like racing, like NASCAR, NHRA, Supercross? Like, what are you normally watching these days when it comes to uh, racing? Um, anything, everything. My ego was always bigger than my truck, so I would race anything. I, if it rained, and I would get popsicle sticks and race my neighbor, and then with the water running down the side of the curb or the down the street. Um, so I like motocross. Uh, off-road, um, NASCAR, NHRA, uh, anything with, with uh, a motor. Um, I like camping and fishing, too. So I'm, I'm cam I go camping a lot and sit by the campfire, uh, wakeboarding all the time. Just any, any kind of sport. I'm big into X Games, and uh, I go see Travis and them guys when Nitro Circus comes around. and uh, any, Anything like that. I mean, I'm an adrenaline junkie. So anything that's a little bit off the, off the norm is something I like. Yeah, that's pretty cool, you know. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, is there any type of social media people can follow you on? Oh yeah, well, um, I'm still big on Facebook. Uh, yeah, my my personal page is maxed out. Um, so we started a, a fan page. So I'm on there. Um, I have my Black Rock Trucks page where I'm posting pictures and stuff of what we're doing at the shop. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, you know, Snapchat. Still kind of being part of uh, answering everything i can for the fans and interacting as much as i can um they're just trying to give back is there you know anything that you'd like to say to the fans that have supported you throughout these many years yeah well man there's a lot i'd like to say but basically i love you all uh thank you so much for let me live a dream and um thank you for uh let me be part of this whole thing you know it, it's something that um uh, i treasure every day of my life i thank god for the opportunity and to be able to to do it and if it wasn't for the fans and the support and the love and 
the experiences, uh, I would never have this chance. Um, you know, people like, like Connor, you know, he's out there. I know he's watching this and, uh, I can never give back everything that they've given me. Uh, no matter how hard I try. I mean, the, the fans have been there through thick and thin and, uh, I love you all. You know, thank you so much for letting a dream come true for me. Yeah, thank you. That it's pretty cool that you know, fans still recognize you, and you know, and you're been a very awesome representative. Uh, I I idolized you and stuff like that, and uh, I want to say thank you for everything that you have done. It's been awesome. Oh, oh, he's back. There he is. <laughs> Can you hear us? There, John. Oh, must be having some issues again. Oh. Can you hear us? We can. I lost the sound. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, he'll, he'll, he'll be back, hopefully. <laughs> oh, Mike. <laughs> Tim Hortons or Dunkin' Donuts? Tim Hortons all the way. Duncan. I'll go against. I like Tim Hortons. Brad. Duncan. But but I'll say this. High octane coffee over everything. Yes. Yes high indeed. Octane. Where is it? High octane coffee. Yes indeed. Well right. Uh sorry about that. That hopefully he comes back on for a little bit, but uh uh we're gonna take a break from uh uh the uh guests for next week and uh we are gonna do a watch along. And uh, so if you guys want to do this, we're going to try it. Um, Kyle, Kyle, Sea Sock's on right now. Uh, that's Bucket. Uh, so if everyone want to blow up his page, just blow it up. Just say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, just keep on doing that. I think the video next week that I, we think was uh, going to be uh, There Goes a Monster Truck, the classic. I remember getting that for Christmas there one year. And I, I watched that tape till it worn out. That, that the one scene where he crashes the truck. Oh no, not again! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're gonna do oh. that, and then oh, there's John right there. Hopefully, he gets back on. He's he's back. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> sorry about that. I got bounced out for some reason. Oh no worries. For some it's reason, right. like, the right. camera quit, and then we could hear you, but you could hear us. Well, I thought maybe I said I thought Kyle. I thought she just wanted to eliminate me again, like last time. <laughs> No, this this was uh this was Bucket's idea. So Bucket wanted to take over uh everything. So he went ahead and uh, he said at least once one uh C sock is here. So, so yeah, uh, he was about to take over the show. Well yeah, my kids always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, thank you, John, for being on. Uh we were telling people about our next week's episode. Uh we're gonna do a watch along, which is pretty cool. Like it's like kind of like a little bit of like uh uh mystery science theater three thousand. Oh, cool. You know, we watch an old school monster truck video and then he's gone. And oh uh, he's, he's back. There. Uh we we watch that and just uh, make fun of the video. So that's yeah, what we're gonna, we're gonna do. Again. But John oh. wanna say thank you for being on. Oh he can't hear us again. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't tell what his son was talking about. <laughs> but, so you bad. know, th th I just want to say thank you guys for all the support that you guys have shown oh. us. Um, you know, we're hoping to get some more episodes recorded here soon. Oh, John's back. Guess who's <laughs> back? Back again. Yeah. <laughs> back again. Um, I'm trying to steal the show again. <laughs> once again, John. <laughs> <laughs> but again, John, thank you for being on. It was awesome to have well, you on too. Me, man, it's an honor, and I really appreciate it. And you guys are doing awesome. You're doing a lot for the country right now by giving everybody to get their mind off of stuff. So keep up the good work. Oh, uh, thank you, man. And, and I hope we ha we can have you on again uh, some other time, and and definitely shoot some more stories, and you know, just talk about the sport. It'd be cool if you could get like three or four guys on, like myself, and Mike Wine, and. Get Wiggins or somebody, and like, if there's a way of linking all of us together, that would be pretty funny. Yep, there, there's a way that we can do that with using this platform. So we, we're it's a lot up to like a five or six people in here. So we definitely want to do that and get get Mike Wine in here with you. That'd be a, that'd be a riot. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be there in a heartbeat. Oh my goodness, 
That would be like the UN. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Really, let me be part of it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you, John. Um, and uh, give him a shout out. You know, say hi to him. Mike, he, man, I love, say love hi you back. Buddy. You know, so. Miss you all. Give my love to your family and uh, you know, get in all your fans and everybody. You know, thank you so much, uh, my bat family and uh, everybody. You know, thank you for the support and uh, uh, and let me live a dream. Man, I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right, guys. Thank Take you, care, John. Guys. All right, guys. Like I said, see ya. Bye. There we go. So, like I said, next week is the uh, the watch along. But the week after, uh, I will be in a different room because I'm moving. But uh, it's up in the air. We're gonna get a guest on. Um, it could be anyone. So uh, we may promote this soon. I'll let Brad know who will be it. But as of right now, next week, uh, Brad will tell you how to do what we have to do. What, what you know what we're gonna do here uh for next week's episode and uh just have some fun with it yeah and also cheech was mentioning to me before we got on the air that um there might be a crush this truck on the outlaw virtual monster truck drag so keep an eye out for that so um hopefully either one weekend cheech will be jabbing one weekend will be me so who knows what'll happen but there'll be a crush this truck being represented out there so just keep an eye out for that that's gonna be a cool thing also, our T-shirts on belowthecollar.com backslash crush this podcast. We've got about three designs up so far. One is actually I'm using as my wallpaper on my computer uh, screen. So go check that out. They're only 20 bucks a pop. Uh, I think uh, only $7 of that goes to us. Most of it goes to the company for the printing and shipping and everything like that. So go, go check that out. That helps us get some equipment and allow us to make the quality better for you guys. Um, 6B Apparel, Cheech is rocking that one. I'm sitting down. My gut won't let me button this one up right now. But uh, I had to put mine on after uh, Dylan Sabatini kind of mentioned <laughs> I should be wearing mine. So, But we have new ones coming. Uh, 6B Apparel always hooking us up, making us look fresh. Um, Cheech, uh, Mike Hedman says, what about new stickers? Uh, as of right now, I got it. As of right now, I haven't got any uh, up-to-date Right now, uh, the lady did tell me it was going to take a few weeks for new stickers and stuff like that because of what's going on. Uh, they had to cut their you know, business a little bit. So it's only one guy doing all the work, and he has to go back and forth to Kankakee in here. So uh, it's going to be a while. Just be on the lookout for that. Uh, Mike, you're not getting anyway because no one likes you. So uh, <laughs> we're going to go from there. And uh, uh, I, I, unless Mike wants to walk over and pick it up, ouch. Anyway, uh, yeah, go, uh, we'll get stickers. Mike, Mike, if you ever meet Mike, he's a pretty cool cat. Very informative, too. If you want to hear some stories about, you know, back in the day in Monster Truck history, he'll tell you that. Um, you know, he's a huge Chicago guy, uh, meaning uh, he's a Chicago diehard guy. Uh, and he'll tell you stories from, like, the Rosemont Horizon or any place near the area. Um, it's pretty cool to hear him. Uh, he's crying right now. He just said, Geez, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, just kidding with you, Mike. But yeah, if you want to hear some stories and meet him at the hall of fame, he will tell you stories in the day. He has pictures of, uh, gosh, uh, I think, uh, back in the eighties where it's like Bigfoot three or Bigfoot two doing a car crush in an arena. Um, uh, you know, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, if you want to go ahead, he, he doesn't bite. Uh, his son may, but Mike won't. Uh, but uh, he will tell you stories left and right. And he's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool cat. Yeah. And then, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, stickers will be coming out. Uh, I I can't give you guys the ETA on it because I have no idea when. Speaking of which, we don't even know the ETA of these yet. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and also uh, one thing. Is one of these nights, uh, Saturday night, maybe one of these nights, I'm going to go live by myself and do a stream of me doing some design work um, just to show you guys kind of my process as a graphic designer, uh, designed to crush this truck for the rigs or rods stuff. So, um, you know, show you guys kind of my thought process from doing a design start to finish. It, even though it's virtual, it's still, you know, related. And um, that's one thing I've always kind of wanted one to do. One of the designs you did, Brad, 
Uh, speaking of which, you did a design for, uh, uh, I guess, for another podcast group out west, too. They gave yep. you a shout out. Yep. Uh, Vince, Vincent Ackard and MJ Solorio have a podcast coming out uh, called uh, uh, the Monster Truck Outlaws of the West. Um, go check them out. Go show them love. Go show the Monster Cast guys some love as well. Uh, thanks to Vincent for letting me design their logo. It turned out really awesome. Um, you know, I'm trying to do a lot more with my graphic design stuff right now and try to get some more work done with that. And, you know, I eventually want to do it full time again one day, but as of now, I'm still working at the Bottle Depot. So, you know, doing that whole nine to five, making those dollar dollar bills, which turns out to, you know, if it makes out to be about 50 cents in general, <laughs> but no, I'll go live. Nice. And but I'll, you know what? I'll go live and do oh, some okay. design. I, I thought you stopped. No, I'll just I'm just, I'll go live and do some design work and. <laughs> but you know, there's a delay al- between me and him. So. Yeah, yeah. But as always, we want to give thanks to uh, High Octane <laughs> Coffee, uh, J Concepts, uh, Back Channel Productions with Nick Davis, Six P Apparel, and uh, Marty Garza in his book. Go check that book out. I I'm hopefully going to get a copy here soon, so I want to check that out. Yeah, me too. You know, and um, also, uh, uh, you know, we'll hopefully we'll be up and running. You know, doing shows and stuff like that. Sounds like, uh, 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 you know, states are kind of opening up, so it's just pretty cool. Uh, but everyone, uh, thank you for being on. I'll let Brad know who's going to be coming up in the next couple weeks. Uh, uh, it's going to be pretty cool uh, if we get it, if we get it together. There's going to be two big names right now, so. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to be working on uh, some gonna, myself. Uh, keep... Yeah, you know, uh, that's what you said two years ago. Anyway, you know, so. Um... <laughs> well, 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 it's just the Brad show now, mothers. I was going to say mother, you know what, but I'm not going to because I'm a good Christian boy. Oh, there's Chichi again. <laughs> yeah. uh, hi. I'm back on. I got fired and rehired. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I was about to say. Uh, Oh man, I brain farted uh, about it. I know you're doing a solo video. Uh, you know, we're gonna just keep on trucking. Uh, hope you guys like the monster cast version of our thing. At the end, I guess we created something. So you may hear them at a couple episodes. You may call in and try to sell Brad some stuff. So uh, watch out I, for this uh, I, daylight. I don't know what that guy's deal was. Like seriously. I was just trying to film a video for those guys, just and somehow he hacked me into my computer. I don't know. Well, that Aaron guy, he's related to that Jay Greenlight, and he got into your system when you made that video for you for Jamie Garner. So that's what the situation happened. He got into your stuff, and you know he's trying to sell, help the people out with uh, some uh, uh, awesome books for the monster cast questionnaire, but he's done with that. I think he's right now in a little bit of a lawsuit. So, uh, uh, Tina Jordan want to ask, uh, Tina Jones Smith want to ask, what was John's business name again? I think it was Black it, Rock Trucking. Yeah. Black Rock, tr- Black Rock Trucks and Fabrication, I believe. Yeah. Kyle, Black Rock Trucks and Equipment. Yeah. There you go. Yep. So, uh, I'll be them in Bloomsburg this year. Uh, uh, you know, we're going to be doing the four wheel drive jamboree. So if anyone wants to know, uh, trucks to be announced, but we will be there. Yeah. Uh, and they're announcing them right now, but it is what it is. And, and the, the Hall but, brothers uh, team might be having a Canadian stowaway for about two weeks. Hopefully if everything works out. Yes. Yes. Well, you can join and have the hard work and hang out with Mike wine. <laughs> And again, guys. But, uh, yeah, so next week, next week, fans, will be a watch along hosted by Brad. I'll be watching it too. But uh, just uh, we just try to make fun of it, I guess. I haven't seen it. This will be the first time for me seeing it. So Wait, what? Is, you've uh, never seen There Goes a Monster Truck? Yeah. What? No. no way. No. That's like my childhood. I first remember time. like. I remember getting it for Christmas and it came with an actual like toy truck on with the tape. And and I was obsessed with it. And it has some good USA Motorsports footage, you know, Snake Mite, Bigfoot, um, Dragon Slayer, 
uh, Guy Wood and the Smoke Craft Beef Jerky Truck. It's a great tape. And it, it, it's hilarious. It's also got Frank Scatini and Big Dummy back in the day. It, it, it's a classic. It's one of my favorites of all time. So, that, yep. <laughs> Kevin, goofiest MT movie ever. Correct. A Mundo, sir. And, and guys, thank you, for, like I said, for all the love and support you guys have shown us over the last couple months. And, you know, we're, we're putting in a lot of hard work to bring you guys awesome content. And we're going to conti continue to do that. You know, we're going to let Cheech have his time to move. You know, that's the, uh, I know what it's like. I moved into my place in January. So we're going to give him his space to move. You guys will be joining me next week. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. And we're going to be coming back with some episodes here very soon. So once Cheech gets settled in, we'll do some more recordings and get things kind of rolling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, the atmosphere will be good, and I thank the opportunity. But yeah, I'll I'll be back on uh, the week after. We'll, uh, I got some stuff on it. I got some stuff on this phone, and uh, we'll be able to get this rolling. And uh, once again, uh, uh, Brad's having a techno party. So if anyone wants to go <laughs> to <laughs> somewhere in Alberta, <laughs> Canada, <laughs> go right ahead. It looks like a green screen. To be honest with you, it looks like you're behind a green screen. No, it's actually look. I can control it with my phone. Uh, that's what that's well, happens when you have you a have Phillips control. Philip. Oh, she's just throwing shots. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's okay. you, know, thank I you guys I'm throwing shots at everyone. Everyone's getting. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're Oprah. Everyone gets one. Everyone. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> But no. But thank you, fans. Thank you for everything you guys done. You know. Yeah. And uh, you know, and and like and she said, you'll be with me next weekend, hope or next week, and I might be going live in a few days to do some design work. So, you know, again, thank you to everybody that supports us. Hi, Octane Coffee, J Concepts, Back Channel Productions, Six B Apparel, and Marty Garza with his book. Um, any last words, Cheech? No, just want to say thank you for everyone. Uh, follow us at HallBrothersRacing.com. Uh, Rami Nader. Dot com uh, to see what's our schedule like. Uh, follow me on my RC page. Uh, I just dropped two new trucks. Uh, thanks to Bob Chandler, uh, son Bobby Chandler, and uh, also Jonathan Arnold from JB Scale Graphics. I'm, I'm gonna give them a shout out right now. Uh, uh, just because I just looked at Mike Hedman's comment. Uh, Chief Wise Nathan uh, tied up in the corner. Uh, why? Because, uh, uh, why do you ask so many questions, Mike? <laughs> you know, what's your problem? Huh? What's your Mike. problem against me? You know, don't worry about Nathan. He's quiet back there. He's quiet right now. Shut up. But, uh, you know, he's doing all right. Anyway, back to reality here. Uh, JB scale graphics on Facebook, Jonathan Arnold and his group make some of the coolest, RC decal wraps out there. He's the only company right now that's officially licensed by the Team Bigfoot Trucks and Marty Garza's Overkills. Uh, same thing, he's also working details with Black Sally and stuff like that. So if you go through him, he will help you out with detailing. He also makes flags. Uh, so you name it, you got it. Um, he's the one that wrapped uh, my hot seat truck. If anyone wants to take a look at that, <coughs> and go ahead and give him a shout if you're into the RC world and it's reasonable, it's not expensive. And uh, so it's JB Scale Graphics on Facebook and I think also on Instagram. And I think you can go to j.b.scalegraphics.com. So take a look at them and, uh, you know, uh, give a big shout out to them. And also Trigger King, uh, that's my uh, RC group. I have to give them love too. Uh, they have been rocking on the YouTube channel with races throughout the Midwest, Illinois, and uh, uh, Missouri, mostly the St. Louis area. Uh, give them a shout out. A lot of these guys that watch the podcast, thank you for the love that uh, you guys have done. Uh, yeah, thank you. I know Jeremy Mark. He's a huge Taurus fan. Uh, he watches this. It keeps him busy. I think other guys have seen it. So thank you for all the support. Uh, and uh, thank you for for everything that's going on. Thank you, Kevin, uh, for the compliment. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, uh, just wanted to give the shout-out. It's about to be summer season for the RC 
And it's a good sign because Missouri just opened up. So uh, hopefully we'll get together there. And and uh, speaking of which, I know we're doing this pretty long time, but what's going on? I want to know on a serious note. We've been serious anyway. When is some of the places in Canada opening up? Are they already opened up on your neck of the woods? Um, from what I've known um, for here in Alberta, like my area, uh, the premier, which is kind of like the head of our provinces or whatever. I don't know what they would call it in the States or whatever, but um, they're saying stage one should be around the 14th, which I'm excited because that means barbershops are opening up and I need a haircut. So yeah, I'm you know excited about that. And if, and you know, even with my church, you know, we're still only allowed 15 people in there streaming. Um, I'm actually playing drums this Sunday, uh, not Sunday, but this Friday night at my church. So uh, rocking the drums as always. So, and you know, you guys can also follow me on social media at the monster truck Canucker. Um, Snapchat's uh, Shaw Design Zero One. Um, you know, thank you guys for all the love and support. And uh, yeah, anything else, Cheech? I'm right now looking at my social media right now. I know you guys go see me at Dan Agosh uh, on Facebook, uh, Dan Cheech Agosh. On Instagram, I'm literally looking through my uh, <laughs> phone because uh, Dan, yeah, Dan Cheech Agosh together. Uh, also, Dan Agosh RC. Uh, follow me on both on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, also uh, on Snapchat is uh, Dan Agosh Ten. So uh, go ahead and give some love. Uh, you know, take a look at some of the stuff that we have done. Um, and also, uh, be on the lookout for, uh, uh, a few of us on the Outlaw Monster Truck, Outlaw Monster Truck Drags by Joey Sylvester in High Octane Coffee right there. Yep. Uh, they go on every Sunday at 9 p.m., except for this one that's going to be on Monday. Uh, uh, cause, uh, it's Mother's Day. Mother's Sunday's Day, yep. Mother's Day. So if you have your mother, go ahead and hang out with her. I'm going to go back home this week to get some stuff, but I'm going to hang out with her, uh, Sunday for Mother's Day. You know, uh, uh, you know, she hasn't seen me all this year, literally because of what we, what I do, but it's okay. Kevin asks, it's Mother's Day. Uh, 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 Cheech, how much to pet the panda? Kevin asks, how much to pet the panda? He doesn't have the money. I was gonna say about Trey Fitty. <laughs> Trey Fitty, three hundred and fifty dollar, not three dollars and fifty cents, not three hundred and fifty cents, three hundred and fifty dollar. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, next week uh, it'll be the watch along with me watching. There goes a monster truck. Um, hopefully, you guys join me for that one. I'll be hanging out watching it no matter what. So. Um, you know, thanks Cheech for, uh, always sticking along with us and sticking by me with this crazy journey that we are on. And, you know, thank you fans for, <laughs> for all the support. So it's pretty right. crazy what's been going on. We, we can't, we cannot thank you guys enough. You know, like Brad always been saying, we started his idea in 2014 and, uh, it's been going uh, non-stop after that, but, uh, also in the next, uh, probably in the beginning of June, we're going to get back and rolling, doing some audio footage too. audio yeah. footage, audio bites for the, most of the podcast. Uh, I don't know at the top of my head, does these episodes go on the podcast form? Um, no, but I can put them up. Uh, normally I've been keeping these ones for video, like these ones, but we can put them in, up in the audio, uh, format as well. Um, I can start doing that. Okay. Um, to kind of because right now well, maybe we, we we'll, we'll have some more uh, guest announcements soon. By the way, we're getting closer to our goal of releasing the Ryan Anderson episode. Okay, we need you. We need to get to that mark so we can release that. We, we've had it for a long time. We want to give it to you guys. That was one of our biggest interviews so far. We want to give it to you guys. So let's get to that five thousand mark, guys. Actually, where yes, are we at yes. right now? I want to uh, see what we're at. 2,800 or something like that. We, we've, we've definitely gained a lot recently. I know we're going a long time. We're just shooting the breeze, but stay, stay, stay with us, guys. Stay with us. 
Let's see here. Where are we at? We are at... Da, 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 da. Um, it was 3,000 likes. Sorry, not 5,000. I'm dreaming. Um, we are at 2,778 as of this moment. So we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So as soon as that one, as soon as we get to 3,000, Ryan Anderson, Ryan Anderson episode comes out. So um, that does it for me. Anything, I've, I've said it a couple times now, Cheech, anything else you, you want to add, buddy? Uh, pretty much. Uh, thank you once again. Be on the lookout for uh, some names. We're going to we're probably during, you know, even though Brad's going to do his watch along, we're still probably release the, uh, the information on what's going on. So we'll go from there and do that. But thank you, fans. And uh, uh, Brad, uh, you know what to do. Yeah. Well, as always, guys, as we always say on Crush This since day one, keep the rubber side down and the shiny side up. Peace.